What is up guys? In this video, we're going to be looking at plug flow reactors, and sometimes they're also referred to as tubular reactors. But in our derivation of the design equation in this video, we're going to see how we don't necessarily need constant cross-sectional areas. Uh, another way of putting it is we don't need perfect cylinders. Uh, we can still apply this same exact equation uh, to any other type of reactor that follows these criteria. And as a side note, I love plug flow reactors. I think they're really awesome and amazing because um, it's very fun and we use the definition of derivative to uh, arrive at our design equation. And the very first thing to make note of here, uh, especially when I was being introduced to this topic, was that one of the biggest assumptions we make in our plug flow reactors is the fact that we have turbulent flow inside of our reactor. What that means is that our flow profile is very uniform. It has a constant, uh, if we were to look at the farthest point, hopefully we can see the pen here, uh, if we were to look at the flow or the velocity of the fluid inside of our reactor at any point along the uh, slice that we take inside of our PFR, our plug flow reactor, we will see that the, the velocity is uniform. And that is what happens when we have turbulent flow regimes inside of cylindrical tubes. Uh, the, other, the other flow here that you would talk about in a fluid mechanics course would be uh, laminar flow. And laminar flow profiles look more parabolic. So as we get closer to the edges of our uh, walls inside of our tubes, there's more friction which slows down the flow profile, which is the reason why you get slower velocities uh, the farther radially out you get from the center. And generally it's a parabolic in nature. But uh, for the sake of this video and for introducing the, the topic of turbulent uh, plug flow, this is the flow profile that we are assuming inside of our reactors. Now the other thing that uh, we need to assume about our plug flow reactor in these design equations is that radially, and radially refers to anything from r equals zero to r equals big R, the radius of our tube. So anywhere along this axis inside of our slice is well mixed. We will assume that every single um, control volume, as we make these control volumes, you know we talk about the continuum or continuity, like we make these control volumes very small, we will assume that uh, the concentration is homogeneous no matter where you are radially, no matter what your radius is inside this slice, same concentration. And so with all of that stuff out of the way, um, the next thing we're gonna look to is the uh, general mole balance equation that I have in red right here. And what we're gonna do that's very interesting with plug flow reactors, is we're gonna use a variant of this thing. It is the same equation, but in this case, we're gonna be applying it to a control volume that is that we'll, we will let be infinitely small in volume. And so what I mean by that is, essentially we're gonna take a little slice like we have here, and we're going to perform a general mole balance on it. Um, and then something else I forgot to mention is that basically, the way to think about your plug flow reactors is it's a bunch of batch reactors that are stuck together. You have infinitely many batch reactors uh, right next to each other. And as you walk, if you were to walk at the same velocity as the fluid inside of your um, plug flow reactor, you would essentially see a batch reactor in process or in, in progress. So um, if we were to take a look at this little slice as we're walking through this uh, reactor, our PFR, what we would do applying our general mole balance equation to it is first recognize that coming into our little control volume, we would have some flow rate uh, moles per second of a component A, for instance, and this is going to be evaluated at a particular volume, and I'm calling it V. Exiting our control volume, we will have a flow rate of A leaving, and this is going to be um, evaluated at V plus delta V. So delta V is the volume of our control volume in this case. And to spell it out a little bit more explicitly, uh, at this point here, we have V and we have V plus delta V. So a volume one and then a volume plus an additional little volume. Um, and so what we do next is we begin to plug these variables into our design equation up here. And what we'll have is we'll have uh, the flow rate of A entering our system at the volume V, 
we will have exiting our control volume the flow rate of moles of A evaluated V plus delta V and then if because we've made a well mixed assumption because of this uh, radially well mixed assumption we can simplify uh, this term here to simply be plus RA times the volume but in this case we have a volume of delta V or uh, yes delta V and then if we make a steady state assumption which is very common with our plug flow reactors uh, what this tells about this term is that we can now let it be equal to zero and so we've now modified or plugged and chugged our um, general mole balance equation to arrive at this and so what we're going to do next is just move uh, this term to the other side of the equation and what we'll arrive at is FA evaluated at V minus FA evaluated at V plus delta V is equal to minus RA times delta V. And hopefully you can see now if we divide both sides by delta V we have something that's very closely uh, reminiscent of the definition of derivative. And if we also multiply both sides of our equation by minus one, I'm gonna uh, write this out a little more clearly now. What we have is FA evaluated at, and if I put it in a different notation, it might also help make this more obvious. FA evaluated at V plus delta V minus FA evaluated at V divided by delta V I put in the minus one and rearrange the term slightly is equal to RA. And now if we take the limit on both sides as delta V goes to zero, I'm oh, sorry, the handwriting. Anyways, um, what we arrive at is RA is equal to DFA DV. And so this right here is the design equation of a plug flow reactor and we got it by using the definition of derivative and note here how we only care about the volume that's accumulated think about it as like a running accumulation of volume and i don't necessarily care if i'm looking at this slice right here or this slice right here inside of a weirdly shaped non uh, uh, constant cross-sectional area cylinder and um so that is going to be the design equation that we're going to be using um, and so if you can prove this which you very well may have to do on a midterm or a final you're in good shape and in future videos we're going to be looking at how uh, to size these reactors according to desired uh, conversions and flow rates so i hope this helps and let me know if you have any questions